Could that injury have been done by direct manipulation or injury? Could it have been done because he was putting pressure on the spinal cord in the process of trying to control the bleeding? And again, through what we know is that narrow space, you're not even able to visualize the cord well. So who knows what was being packed in there? The stories seem very consistent that he would claim, I can see through the blood, or I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing as anesthesiologists are looking at 1200 cc blood loss. So if you're not stopping what you're doing and you're not putting pressure on that, you don't know where the bleeding is and you're not controlling it and you're continuing hard to even imagine a surgeon doing such a thing. It just seems like your instinct when there's bleeding of that sort to stop and control it. That's the first thing that we're taught, right, is to control bleeding because especially neurosurgery really is such an elegant specialty. And my training, learning to clip aneurysms and take brain tumors out, it is meticulous work. And that really is from the very beginning of what we learn as neurosurgeons is hemostasis. That's like that's in neurosurgery 101. You know, know what you're doing and controlling blood loss. You know, not the least of which is it certainly don't want somebody to bleed to death, but the more important thing is that you need to see what you're doing because you are operating in or near critical structures. And in the podcast and in the television series, they certainly portrayed an individual who was, it seemed very cocksure of himself, wanted to, to do things quickly. And it was, there was a lot of bravado there. And that's exactly the way you cannot be. We don't want you to be timid. You really can't be afraid as a neurosurgeon, but you also have to take the time to do things correctly. And that certainly includes making sure that you don't lose that much blood from a relatively straightforward operation. 